here at the boat show, we've taken a look at flats boats, inshore boats, offshore boats, crossovers, hybrids. Mm -hmm, These are all fishing boats. Guys are fishing for a wide variety of species, a wide variety of waters, a wide variety of depths. Absolutely. And we're all using sonar fish finding technology in various forms, down looking, forward looking, out looking. Right. And ultimately, the performance of that gear really depends on the transducer. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so Craig Cushman from Aramar is going to help us understand the decision-making oh, process. Yeah. So well, Craig. That's that, that's great. You know, the analogy that we always use with transducers is you can have a great stereo, but it's only going to sound that much better when you put great speakers with it. And what Airmar does is we make transducers that are the best speaker, if you will, on the market. And that really matters because with, when you match up a, a transducer to your fishing style, you're going to get the most out of your fish finder and you're going to learn the most about what's under you in the water column. What would I be looking for? Well, that's a great scenario, and it used to be that there was a one-size-fits-all kind of a scenario for transducers, and certainly we make some that can have a wide range of use, but today's chirp transducers are really different tools in the toolbox for what you're trying to do. So okay. we talk about frequency bands, and, and high frequencies are better in inshore and in shallower water, better for def definition on smaller fish. The low frequency gives you that deep water penetration. penetration yeah. So what we tend to find are, are the boats that you just mentioned will go with either a mix of transducers in different frequency ranges or they'll get a combination okay. um, and they'll tend to load their, their, their toolbox up with the right tools and that's usually different frequencies, different power levels of transducers. So no matter what they're playing for game that day, whether they're fishing super deep or shallow, they've got the right tool to, to match what they're doing. How about the installation decisions? You know, yeah. some, some, some boats are set up, you know, pre-rigged from the factory with through hauls. Sure. Other boats, guys are looking at transom mount transducers. Yep. Um, sort of how does that decision making process work? Well, we look at a, we look at a boat and we, we try and figure out how the air and the water flow down the hull of that boat, right? And we want to make sure that any transducer that gets put on the boat has the face of the transducer below the bubbles that come down the hull of right, that boat. Right, that's important. All right, so based on the boat, we're going to try and figure out which placement is best. Got it. What kind of trends are you guys seeing? What, 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 what might be new and novel? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, for, for us, it is, it's really, it's wide. Mm -hmm. um, how, how wide can we get? And, and people want to see greater area, but they want to see that area with, with the best definition they can. So we've started to innovate. Not only did we innovate CHIRP, um, you know, back in 2011, 2012, but we've started to take things like the ceramics that are in it and create an array of ceramics. So not only does that, does that give you great power, but it also gives you this really broad, wide area to, to look at, right? So the more the more information you can get on the screen, the more decisions you can make for fishing. Sounds good. Well, the weather looks good for this weekend. I'm going to spend some time out there hunting for fish, good. and I'll probably come back at the end of the day and look at your website and see what my next option for my next transducer might be. Awesome.